Now we're. Uh, SWAT team got the guy. Nine o'clock. No, I was saying. I almost busted it up. Uh, let's try. I'm trying it on cellular. I'm trying it on cellular now. How is this? I turned off the Wi-Fi. How how is that? Did did you guys hear Michael Chappé instead of instead of SWAT team he just said twat team? You heard that? <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> I was laughing my ass off. Tactical Pro Shop should should make a patch. Oh, you remember what you were doing with Homeland Security or local law enforcement or you piece of shit? Wow, you really, Brian Suits, Ocean Shores, you remember what you were doing with Homeland Security or the local law enforcement, you piece of shit? Well, what? You, you, uh... You confuse me. Aberdeen, Washington, Ocean Shores, Westport, Washington. Remember running with the homies? They're harassing me. <laughs> You're being harassed by Homeland Security? <laughs> uh, gosh, I'm sorry, BCAT 2D11. <laughs> Sounds like you need to be harassed by even more uh, authorities than that. Okay, bye. He's in timeout. You're in timeout, dipshit. But I will, you know what? I'm going to talk to my friends at Homeland Security in Westport, Washington. And they're going to come and they're going to TP your car and they're going to honk their horns at 4 a.m. So prepare to reap the whirlwind, motherfucker. There's times that I wish it was that easy. Enjoy holiday fireworks on July 3rd and return the next day to enjoy the best fireworks show in town on July 4th, both courtesy of Budweiser. Visit Dodgers.com. Hmm. What's the last time anyone saw a layer cake? Have you all seen layer cake recently? People ask them all the time, what windows did you choose to put in your house? Well, they've chosen... <clears throat> Uh, yep. Uh, Guadacandra? What's that? What's Guadacandra? 
Oh, Fauda. Okay. Yeah, I binged. Now I'm in a Fauda hole, you know. Um, there's several really good books on the Silu Scouts. Uh, I'll have to get back to you on that one. There's several really good ones. <clears throat> KFI AM 640 more stimulating talk it is the dark secret place Brian sits in here on midnight when you're all going to be felons if you don't convert your California compliant AR-15 rifle into something that's not an assault weapon. It's going to be retroactively an assault weapon at uh, mid. I know you're sitting there saying, well, wait, it's a semi-automatic center fire rifle right now, and it's unloaded and locked in the closet, and it only fires, it only has a 10-round magazine. I can't even detach that from the rifle. Well, you can if you have a bullet button. Uh, um, y'all, um, uh, it, well, it will be at midnight. Now, are you, well, there's a way you can leave it on, but anyone else in the world would laugh at California calling that an assault rifle. Uh, for instance, uh, let's say some protesters in uh, the city of Khoramshar, Iran. I should point out that's semi. That's semi-auto. That's not full auto. That's, um, that's somebody who sounds... To me, like maybe they've been trained that uh, they, that ammunition is finite, and uh, and you're hard pressed for two thousand miles from where uh, this was recorded to find somebody that's aware that AK-47 has a semi-auto setting. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so somebody paid attention in the training. So what's going on in Iran? Um, con contrast with what happened in America today. People from Los Angeles to Bangor, Maine, uh, out in the streets calling for the abolition of ICE um, and calling uh, America enforcing border law oppression. Yet, oddly enough, thousands of people continue coming here every single month with their kids. Um, and then 80% of the kids are unaccompanied. So uh, they're obviously unaware of the handmaid's tale police state that we are here in America. Um, meanwhile, on the other side of the world, people had to take their lives uh, in their hands and disarm security forces to get weapons to shoot back at very actual oppression. Like, you know, uh, the, uh, the hang a 17-year-old girl uh, for blogging kind of oppression that happens in Iran. Uh, uh, yeah, and the, uh, you know, hang a gay dude that happens in Iran. And, you know, well, pretty much hang anyone uh, because very actual oppression is happening uh, tonight in Iran because the Iranian authorities are getting more and more panicked. So the uh, the issue here is uh, uh, the the Saudis and you heard, you've heard me talk about this now uh, for coming going on four years is that the, currently there is a very low level conflict in the Middle East between the Saudi bloc, the Gulf bloc, the, that's the UAE, Bahrain, uh, Kuwait, and Saudi Arabia, and the Iranian bloc, which now includes Syria, Hezbollah, and occasionally Hamas. But as it turns out, nobody likes Hamas. Oh, yeah, funny thing, too. Uh, you know what they're chanting in Tehran? Death to Israel is normal. We, we, you know, that's so 40 years ago. Death to America is 40 years ago. Death to Palestine is what they're chanting, because um, part of the information operations against the mullahs, against Tehran, that the Saudis are mounting, uh, involve publicizing how much money the Iranians are giving to Hamas. And it, it amounts to about $40 million a month. And uh, what is Hamas money? Well, they pay death benefits for martyrs, uh, you know, things like that. Uh, but they also funnel the money off, and in many, and they also kick it back to the Iranians. But they're they're wetting their own beaks. Even the uh, even the people in Gaza, the people of the Palestinians that Hamas uh, has authority over, uh, don't like it. But in in Iran, 
uh, where they're they're paying to them the real cost of gas. They don't have their normal subsidies and, and things are going very badly. The idea that you're siphoning off 30 or 40 million a month to the Palestinians and getting nothing out of it has enraged people. So the protests are happening all across Tehran and now all across the country. Um, the Saudis have also organized and financed a um, uh, just a spontaneous terror group, a uh, supposed Al-Qaeda-linked Sunni-based uh, terror group has begun operating <clears throat> in the far east of Iran, in the hinterlands between Pakistan uh, and Iran. Their, uh, their refuge are the so-called tribal areas in Pakistan, where the Pakistani government doesn't have authority. There are self-administered tribal areas in, in, in Pakistan, the FATA, the federally administered tribal areas. Also, of course, in Afghanistan. So the terror group that the Saudis funded gets to run back across the border into NATO-controlled Afghanistan or Taliban-controlled Afghanistan. Uh, and what are they doing? Well, they're attacking Iranian police stations uh, and military bases in the far, far east of Iran. So in other words, there's two fronts here. There's a eternal front. Uh, that Gulf intelligence are, are funding by, by stoking unrest amongst the Iranian people, which doesn't take a lot to stoke. It's just that Obama didn't let them do it in 2009. When the Iranians first began rising up, uh, Obama told both sides to calm down, the side with the guns and the side with not the guns. Uh, the Saudis were aghast at that. So now, now they have a very, very willing... Uh, par uh, a partner in Donald Trump, and they're going at it with their full checkbook uh, open, and they're getting results, um, th probably beyond what they wished for. It's one thing to have street protests in Tehran, in the capital. It's entirely a different thing to get the Arab, the ethnic Arab population in southwest Iran to rise up and disarm authorities and then shoot back. So uh, there's a word for that, by the way, and it's rebellion. And it's freaking the uh, the Iranians out uh, big time. What what's their countermeasure? Well, what they did back in two thousand nine was they brought security forces in from far outside Tehran, uh, where they don't speak Farsi, they speak other languages, and they brought those guys into Tehran. Problem now tonight today is that it's not just confined to Tehran; it's now in areas that they're losing control, and that is like I say, the one plus million ethnic Arabs who live in Iran. They're the ones who are uh, somehow getting guns. Um, so this, uh, this is a big deal, and this may change. Uh, you know, by the end of the year, there, there might be a regime change. Maybe there's not. Maybe there's a wholesale slaughter of civilians. You know, never ever, uh, over, probably never ever underestimate what this regime will do with guns to its own people. All right, when we come back, uh, was Trump bamboozled? Uh, does uh, by the North Koreans? Does this actually mean we can't trust? What's his name? No, the rebounder, um, Dennis Rodman. Does this really mean we can't trust Dennis Rodman's uh, judgment on nuclear proliferation? Uh, that tomorrow, when we come back, Brian sits in here until uh, you're all felons with your assault weapons on KFI AM six forty. More stimulating talk. Michael Chappé with the news. Uh, you know, I haven't been to the registration website. I don't know. I do not know. But they would be complete assets if uh, they split hairs and said, oh, man, you didn't register in time. And, and, and you said, yeah, but your site crashed. Who is, what the hell is going on with this BCAT guy? What? Insane. I'll take. Involved with Homeland Security, the local jurisdiction, and Ocean Shores. Listening to my private conversation a few months ago. You've got me. You, B Cat. 
You got me. That was me. Uh, I had Ocean Shores police. Um, uh, not only were they going through your your septic tank to see what you were eating, um, but they were uh, they were tapping your phone. Really help a lot. Um, B cat, can you do me a huge favor? Can you make a death threat on this chat? Can you make a very Um, and that I, I, I just, I need to show LA County that you'll care. <clears throat> so can you do me a huge favor and make the, doesn't, and you know what, doesn't even have to be a death, threat. just threaten, uh, my family or me, uh, with physical harm. And I will tell Homeland Security and Ocean Shores to back off. If you do that for me, um, and you put it in email, by the way, dark secret place at protonmail.com, but it would be more specific. I've been harassed by Homeland Security. You have been harassing me by telling them I'm a possible su terrorist suspect, espionage agent. That's not true. I'm sorry, BCAT 2D11, but I think that you are. Uh, a very, uh, uh, I think you're a dangerous person. I think that you are a terrorism suspect. And um, I, for one, salute Homeland Security and invest uh, threat. That's it's all working with Homeland Security. Uh, in fact, I was. I, in fact, I was because um, uh, we're the up. Um, And an Amazon button. Um, and you didn't wonder where those came from? I mean, you just hook them up? Come on. Don't don't make it that simple. <clears throat> you did not you did not talk to an Israeli special agent and give them my name and my profile. Is that true or not true? It is true. BCAT, it's true. A friend of mine from Israeli uh, Secret Services. Um who uh, who lives in the Ocean Shores area. Now, I'm going to tell you this in all context. Uh, he okay. Um, not Aberdeen. Do you understand me? But he lives in Hoquiam. Uh, and he has a vacation house in Hump Tulips. Do you know where Hump Tulips is? Let me spell it. H-U-M-P-T-U-L-I-P-S. Um, so my Israeli friend who's watching you uh, and you know the McDonald's in Ocean Shores, the one that Israeli microchips in. So he he actually lives in Hoquiam, but he comes down to Ocean Shores to uh, to do surveillance on you. Um, but he mainly lives in. Uh, in uh, Hump Tulips. You were not only involved with Homeland Security, were you not also involved with KFI Radio and the FBI during my investigation? Yes, yes, I was. Yes, you got me again. Boy, you have a you have a pretty good dossier on me. You know, I understand how hard I am to find. You know, I know KFI's really under the radar, and I I thought I'd been you know pretty on the on the DL here, but um, uh, you got me. Hang on, I need a I need a bumper. Bcat 2D11. You know what? Maybe if you got a better username, a, a way less douchey uh, username, I might tell uh, the Israelis to stop spying on you. Uh, and you know that the Israelis talk directly to Homeland Security. Uh, Bcat 2D11. <clears throat> so maybe if you get a better better username. Um, then uh, I won't spy on you as much. So 
slide on for you. Uh, All right, I'm good. It's Saturday, June 30th. What's new today on the iHeartRadio app? iHeartRadio. It's the weekend. Let iHeartRadio provide your soundtrack. Get that summer vibe with real fun. Hey, B-Cat, you're actually watching this, right? I mean, you understand. All summer long, check out our rock party playlist when you want to live loud and play hard at your summer house party. I have to do like an actual radio show. Am I adding humor to cover my ass? Oh my god, that's so unlike me. Your favorite stations, all free. 24 hour news, more stimulating talk. Two great tastes that taste great together. KFI and I heard radio station. Don't use Google to text. That is a Israeli Mossad front, you dumb shit. Is that really your phone number? You're really putting it in the chat? How retarded are you? KFI, AM640, more stimulating talk. You can't help but just sing along to that song. Anyway, never mind. Uh, if you want to do that on your own time, that's Jay and the Americans. The song has come a little bit closer. As featured in Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Uh, well, a, uh, was it a leak or whatever? Anyway, the intelligence community, uh, was the source of some information that has since been confirmed by, uh, Japanese and South Korean intelligence. Uh, the North Koreans evidently, uh, either the word didn't get out from Kim Jong-un down to the lower ranking scientists and engineers, or possibility number two, they were absolutely playing the president for a fool. Um, the Yongbyon uh, nuclear facility <clears throat> is something that the North Koreans built decades ago and have improved and improved and improved. Uh, whenever they improve its capabilities, it means that uh, they're, uh, they're doing it to fulfill a need. In this case, it's crystal clear that the North Koreans are mass producing the model of H-bomb warhead that they tested in 2017, test number six. And by mass produce, I mean, it's not like an assembly line or something, but they're enriching enough uranium so that they can have uh, the estimates are anywhere from 20 to 50 warheads that are actually on missiles. Now, can these actually arc out of North Korea at 38 degrees and reach the east coast of the U.S. and actually re-enter and be functional? We, we don't know. But does anyone want to actually sit around and find out? No, no one does. And that's why we talk to North Korea, right? Well, the, uh, the impression that most people got out of Singapore uh, was that President Trump was very satisfied with meeting Kim Jong-un and that denuclearization was just, you know, months away. Uh, nothing was signed, and going to Singapore and trading drinks and all that does not a uh, nuclear uh, deal make. You can ask anybody still in American government who, who spent the weeks and months and months and months of prep that it took uh, to get a deal with the old Soviet Union, or ask the Soviets, ask the Russians. Um, y y this was the thing. They were a willing partner. Uh, the, the Russians saw the expense of nuclear weapons, and they saw the insanity of nuclear war the same way that we did. And they, they wanted these deals. <coughs> but goal 1A uh, was to also get something out of the U.S. and wind up with an advantage. So for North Korea... There's uh, n no such uh, precondition. They just know that they're not giving up their nukes. They just want to get stuff out of us. Uh, and they've determined that just shaking hands and nodding heads and all that is, uh, is good enough. At some point, President Trump is going to have his hangover. He's going he's gonna to wake up. He's going to realize that nobody in North Korea ever said anything about denuclearization. And that, in fact, if, uh, if what has been leaked... Um, was leaked to embarrass Trump, it probably is going to work. Uh, how will Trump deal with this? Uh, will he do the rational thing and quietly and in back channels 
talk to Kim Jong Un and say, uh, you know what, you did that to me. You didn't have to. It was deliberate. Uh, it wasn't a mistake. Uh, you're not in any way, shape, or form showing me that you're serious. That you're a serious uh, participant in a uh, effort to bring the the nuclear tension down on the Korean Peninsula. The the one thing that North Korea can say back, and this this is sort of my my takeaway on this, is that what what they should be saying is, well, until we have something on paper. There is nothing to do. We are returning the bodies of American missing, uh, missing in action. We're American dead. Um, and we are talking to the South Koreans at another lower level about pulling our artillery back uh, 40 kilometers from the DMZ uh, and, you know, and, and things like that. Though that's a one-sided deal, uh, by the way, because there's, there's no legitimate, tar- there's no decent targets in North Korea within range of South Korean artillery. There's, even if they, if they roll their wheels right up to the DMZ, there's nothing within range of South Korean artillery that's really worth a damn. Uh, the North Koreans, however, they can move their artillery back 40 kilometers. They can still blast the living uh, bulgogi out of Seoul. So it's sort of a cosmetic thing. But hey, it looks like, look at this. We're, we're talking about rolling our artillery back. So anyway, the political takeaway on this, you'll see it tomorrow on the chat shows. Uh, is Trump embarrassed by this? I don't even know if he's been briefed on it yet. If he's briefed on it, he should be pissed. Um, but then also, he shouldn't be surprised uh, unless he thought something happened in Singapore that we all missed. But there was uh, no agreement and nothing was signed. The only agreement was, well, we should do this more often. Well, at some point, the North Koreans have to be, their feet have to be held to the fire. And something has to be slid in front of them that says, we will absolutely disassemble irreversibly our nuclear arsenal and then sign it. That day is never going to come, in case you're wondering. But that's the point, apparently, when the this American government or any other American government uh, government finally realizes that there's a, a new nuclear power on the face of the earth, and it's a really, really weird one. Uh, all right, back next hour, um, some uh, some more out of Syria. Uh, the uh, RAF plane uh, guarding a British a secret base in Syria. Uh, but by dropping bombs on the Syrian army, they kind of revealed where this base was. But the British SAS have a secret base in Syria. We'll talk about that next hour. Also, uh, you'll have about you have one hour to become compliant in California, or else you're a felon. So make that uh, make that semi-automatic rifle compliant, or else it's going to be magically it's going to turn into an assault weapon um, here on Cinderella Night in California. Cinder Cinder Felon Night here in California. You're one hour away from being a felon. Uh, that and more. It's a dark secret place. Brian sits in here until midnight. KFI AM 640, more stimulating talk. KFI is brought to you by um, summer. <clears throat> One more beach days, warmer temperatures, and bugs. Try summer. Um, well, I'm, I am, I'm really, really scared uh, that BCAT actually is a Mossad agent. Uh, I think he's masquerading as someone who um, Homeland Security is persecuting, um, and uh, and and so I'm I'm I accuse him of actually being an Israeli NSA Homeland Security agent, and he's on my chat here on YouTube acting like he's the victim. Well, I tell you, I'm the victim. He's actually the Israeli Mossad agent who's doing the. Um, who's doing the uh, harassment here. And I, for one, am terrified. So, uh, yeah, and by the way, BCAT, what is that? That area code is not Ocean Shores. So. Seven zero seven area code. I'm gonna do a reverse search on you, Bcat. That's a California code up in Norco. Oh, okay. I mean, Norca, Santa Rosa. 
All right. Well, I'm so scared that um, that I'm going to go hide. Now I'm getting I'm getting artifacts on the screen because of the uh, s the cell phone streaming. All right, I'm going to fix this and we'll do it tomorrow for Super Hyper Local Sunday. But once again, KFI is failing me. No. We uh, we tried Wi-Fi. Now, now I'm on cell, and now I'm having streaming problems. So we'll try it. Maybe I'll do, I'll do a stream tomorrow morning for my house. All right. Sorry about this, but hey. By golly, we had a...